everyone. Let's begin lesson two. Lesson two is going to deal with fractions. And we already mentioned it, that it was part of the number systems. And fractions, another general term for fractions, is rational numbers. And fractions is more precise than rational numbers because rational numbers can use variables and lots of other things in them. Whereas fractions, we will only use numbers in the fractions. Fractions have a numerator, and they have a denominator. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of vocabulary at you, but one thing you have to understand about mathematics is mathematics is a language. And if you do not understand the words in the language, then you will not do well in mathematics because you do not know what those words mean. For example, si je vais parler comme ça, est-ce que tu peux comprendre ce que je suis en train de dire? No, of course you didn't understand, because I spoke a language you didn't know, okay? So f mathematics is a language that has to be learned. And just like you didn't understand the French I spoke because you did not know French, doesn't mean that you're, you're stupid or that you're not capable of learning it. It means you just simply have not had that opportunity to learn it. And the same thing is true in mathematics. Often the lack of understanding of mathematics results in the fact, from the fact, we do not know the language that we are looking at or we're listening to or we're reading. So it is really important that you understand what the language is, so that when you read instructions, you know what those instructions mean, and you understand what it's telling you to do. If I told you to go bake a cake, and you didn't know what bake meant, you wouldn't know what I wanted you to do. And the same thing is true with this. So we're going to look at fractions, and we are going to use actual vocabulary. So. Fractions are something that, that have a lot of use in our life today. Many, many different parts of our society use fractions. But you will see fractions in use when you look at ratios, rates, things like six miles per hour can be expressed as a fraction, a proportion. This is another way a fraction is used. Uh, probability is another way that fractions are used. He has a three out of four chances of his number being drawn in the lottery. Okay? So probability. Statistical data can, be used, can use fractions. Or statistical facts can also be put into fraction form. Percentages. Percent. We always talk about your percentage in your grade. This word cent stands for the word 100. So this is per 100. So your 100 and then some number on top. So percentage is actually a fraction. So, a fraction, as I said, consists of a numerator, which is the top number, and a denominator, which is a bottom number. And one thing you need to understand is what are those two numbers. The denominator is the number of pieces And they're equal sized pieces in a whole. In other words, one whole item. The top number is the number of pieces selected. So if I say I have three, four, three over four, we read that as three fourths. So what does that mean? Well, I could take a pie or a pizza, cut it in four pieces, 
and they're not very equal size, but they're pretty close. So four equal size pieces, and I'm going to select three of those because I have two friends and myself there that are going to eat that pizza, and we all want to eat the same amount. So we're going to have three fourths. Three out of those four pieces were selected, okay? Another way to look at it, a loaf of bread, cut it in four equal sized pieces. I'm going to give three of those pieces to myself and two other friends. Another illustration of what three fourths means. Or I could look at the same size groups. Do you see that? I have, in this case, one group, two groups, three groups, four groups. I'm going to select three of those groups. So this can be expressed as three over four, three groups out of four. Or I could express it as the number of dots. I have a total of 12 dots. Nine of those dots have been selected. In this one, three-fourths is a reduction of the nine-twelfths. Every single fraction, if it can be reduced, must be reduced. So if I were to reduce nine-twelfths, this is going to equal nine divided by three, twelve, divided by 3 because this division here has to be exactly the same number because 3 divided by 3 is the number 1 and any number divided by the number 1 is the number I started with okay so this is going to equal 9 divided by 3 is 3 12 divided by 3 is 4 so you can see how looking at it as individuals or looking at this group is the same thing as a reduction of that fraction. I'm going to move that over a bit so it's going to clear. But that applies to that. Okay? So, reducing fractions will become very, very important. And it is so important that you understand what makes up a fraction. So important. The number of pieces selected over the number of pieces in one whole. So when I have more pieces selected than are in one whole, that means I'm going to have more than one whole to deal with. Say I wanted five halves. Well, let's look at that. If I have five halves, that means a whole is divided into two pieces. Well, that's only two. That means I need another whole divided into two pieces, two, three, four, still not enough. So now I have one, two, three, four, five pieces selected. Every one of those pieces is a half. But it takes two and a half to be able to get those five pieces. Just like if you have a big crowd of people and you want to serve pizza to everybody, what's going to happen? You have to buy more than one pizza to do that job. It's the same thing that's happening here with your fractions. And in many cases, we will leave this as five halves. But if it's something that you wouldn't buy that way, like material yardage or gallons of paint, I might be able to buy two and a half gallons of paint but can I buy two and three quarter gallon of paint? Probably not. I'll have to buy three gallons of paint instead, okay? So when things are something that you cannot buy in this format, I can't walk in a store that sells fabric and say, oh, I want to buy five halves yards of fabric. The lady's going to look at me and say, huh? What are you talking about? In that case, I would say, I'm going to buy two and a half yards of fabric. So if I want to know what the mixed number is, in other words, this that comes from that, you take your five, you divide it by two, 
It goes in two times, so two times two is four with the remainder of one. So two is my whole part. One is how much many halves I have left over. So two and a half. And that's how you turn that into a mixed number. Now, most of the problems, as I say, we will leave it as five halves. If you make it a mixed number, unless I say absolutely do not, I will not mark it wrong. But if it's something you can only buy in this format, you need to go ahead and change it. Although I probably will not mark it wrong if you don't. Okay, now that you have a basic understanding of that about fractions, now let's look at addition of fractions. So addition and subtraction. These two follow the same rules. And you'll understand why the rules are there, even though it's a conceptual understanding. Okay? So if I have one fourth plus one fourth. How many fourths do I actually have? Well, this says I've selected one of those fourths. I've selected one more of those fourths. And so now I have two fourths. If we were to draw a picture, there's one fourth. There's another one fourth. I can always draw my circles the same size. One plus one is two. And what size, how many pieces are the hole cut into? Four. So what do you notice about that? When you're adding fractions, what happens? The denominator doesn't change. We add the numerators. Same thing would be true with subtraction. Three-fourths minus one-fourth. We're dealing about a fraction that is dealing with force. In other words, a whole has been cut into four pieces. I started with three-fourths, I gave one of those away, and it left me with two-fourths. But notice, in both of these, I ended up with two-fourths. I'm not finished. And the reason why is because both two and four have a common factor. They can both be divided by two, which makes one-half. Anytime you have even numbers, which are zero, two, four, six, eight, when that number is in the one's place value, you can always divide by two. And the same thing is going to be true here. Divide top and bottom by two and end up with one half. So don't forget, fractions aren't finished until you actually reduce them. So addition, subtraction. But what was true with these two that I did, our denominator were the same, right? Because they were both the same size pieces. But what happens if they are not the same? How about, well, let's go one half plus one fourth. Okay. Here's my one half. Now, what's the problem that you see here? Can I just say 1 plus 1 equals 2? No, I can't. The reason I cannot is because halves and force are not the same size. So before we can add fractions or subtract fractions that do not have the same number of pieces in a whole, we have to get them to the same number of pieces. Now in this case, 2 will go into 4. So I can take this, simply divide it again, and make those halves into force. So now this is how many force? That 1 half became 2 force plus 1 fourth. And now, since my denominator is the same, I can add them, and I end up with 3 force. The same thing would be true with a subtraction. 
one half minus one fourth. Again, two fourths minus one fourth is equal to one fourth. So addition and subtraction, your denominators must be the same. If they are not the same, you cannot add or subtract them. So it's really, really important. Okay, so what happens then when we move into things that are a little more complex? With addition and subtraction. How about 5, 6 plus Uh, let's go three-fourths. Okay? Now, six, four doesn't go into six evenly, so I can't change fourths into six. Not like I did here, where I just drew an extra line and turned it. So I'm going to have to look for something that is a multiple of both six and four. In other words, a number that is six or larger than six, that four will also is a, a divisible or a factor of it. So if I look at six, my next number is 12. Does 12 go into four? Yes, it does. So 12 will become my common denominator. And we can draw pictures of this. And I probably, let me go ahead and do that. These aren't the best pictures, but anyway. Okay, there's my fourth, there's my six. I've got five of these have been chosen. And over here, three of these have been chosen. Okay, to turn six into 12 pieces, every one of these six is gonna have to be divided again. Do you see that? Now I've got 12 pieces. So 6 times 2 made 12, and that means I have to also multiply my 5 times 2, or I can count up all the pieces I have, and I have 10 over 12. Now, to change this into 12s, I'm going to have to get every one of these 4s is going to have to have 3 pieces in it to get there. And now, what do I got? Well, I have 12 total pieces, so I multiply 4 times 3 to get 12. I have to do the same to the top, so I get 9. Now that my fractions are the same with the same size pieces and the same denominator, I may now add 10 plus 9, and I end up with 19 over 12. And since 19 is prime, and 12 can't go into 19. 19 cannot go into 12 evenly. They don't have any common factors. This is your final answer. So it's important to learn that about fractions. Okay, now. Let's look at the zero rule in fractions. We have, it's not really a zero, but the zero denominator And this is an important one to understand and know. If I have a number on top, such as 4 over 0, I have a big problem with that. And the reason I have a big problem with that is because this 0 says I have nothing to make into pieces. There's nothing there. There's no pieces there. So how can I choose four pieces when there isn't any pieces? And because I can't choose something out of nothing, this is said to be undefined. And that is the exact word we want you to use. Undefined. So a number over zero is undefined, whereas zero over four 
this says, I cut a hole into four equal pieces, but I didn't select any of them. So therefore, this one equals zero. You guys will find yourself mixing these two up. So pay close attention to it. Understand that when the zero is in the denominator, it indicates that there's nothing there and you can't cut, you can't make equal pieces out of nothing. There's no equal pieces. Therefore, and there isn't even a hole because that would mean I would have one equal size piece. So there's nothing to get nothing out of. No pieces out of nothing. I can't select four out of nothing. Another way if you looked at this as division, it's also undefined because every number you choose, one times zero is zero, five times zero is zero, uh, 10 times zero is zero, 100 times zero is zero. Every single number times zero is zero, so there's no way to get any kind of a unique answer for four divided by zero. Therefore, also undefined. So there's two different ways to look at it. Both ways you end up with the same answer. It is undefined. Okay, that's the first half of this lesson.